just some additional facts about them that are kind of curious. Like humans, guinea pigs need vitamin C. You probably all know that. But about 30 milligrams a day of vitamin C will keep them healthy and prevent vitamin C deficiency, or scurvy as it is sometimes called. You would give more if the guinea pig was sick, stressed, or pregnant, um, and that would help that guinea pig get through a difficult situation. Their language is very varied. If you're familiar with guinea pigs, you'll know that they squeak and rumble and chatter and do all kinds of interesting things. I cannot go into that detail today, but online you can research it and actually listen in to all the different types of noises that they make. And trust me, those noises do mean something. We can't always translate them, but the guinea pig knows exactly what it's trying to say. They do have a curious habit of eating their own fecal pellets, but sometimes people may find quite offensive. Rabbits do the same thing. They're, no, they're particular type of pellets that actually contain a lot of B vitamins and it helps with their indigestion. So if you see your guinea pig doing it, don't stop it doing it. It's doing it for its own health. All right? Guinea pigs can produce white milk from their eyes, which is used for grooming. They will produce the milk and then with their front paws, they will groom their faces. I have noticed personally that guinea pigs will produce that white milk during times of extreme excitement um, or stress. When I have been supervising a bonding of guinea pigs, I often see that white milk being produced. Uh, it gets produced quickly and then it disappears quickly. Kind of a mystery. I'm not sure what it's all about, but that's something to watch out for and not completely stress over if you see that happening. Guinea pigs will bar the hair. Um, not all, but some can be pretty bad barbers. And we're not absolutely sure of that reason. They could uh, be doing it to establish a hierarchy in their group. Maybe it is just an antisocial bad habit that they have learned and they keep on doing it. If their cage mate is okay with it, then that's fine. It's not going to be harmful <coughs> as such. But it can produce a lot of stress in the other guinea pig if the hair is constantly being pulled out and, and uh, you will hear the other guinea pig squeaking. Their sight is not good, but it's wide angle. It's about 340 degrees wide angle. There's partial color with it too. However, their smell and their sight and their touch is very good. That's why when we have blind guinea pigs in, it really doesn't seem to hold them back at all. They can work out their environment very quickly with a couple of laps around the cage and know where everything is. And if you own guinea pigs, you know that they hear when you go to the refrigerator, they will hear when you crinkle that bag, and they also will smell some strong veggies like cilantro or something like that. In herds, big herds, the pups or babies will be happy to nurse from whichever female will allow them to nurse. They don't have to nurse from their own mother. Um, and that's quite nice when you have big groups of nursing mothers, the babies just kind of go to whoever will, will accept them in at the time. And one thing, don't ever get stressed about, guinea pigs have a bald spot behind their ears. So do not think that that is a symptom of mites or hair loss in any way. That is pretty normal. So thinking about guinea pigs as pets in the family, I think the one of the main considerations is allergies. We see a lot of animals returned because of allergies both of the respiratory system with asthma and also on the skin with hives. If you're considering adopting a guinea pig, test out. Go to somewhere where you can interact with that animal and also interact with the hay that the, that animal needs to eat. 
Um, it can be distressing um, for a child to get an animal, become sick with allergies, and then have to give up the pet. So try and do some research on that ahead of time. And of course, doctors will test for that if that is a concern. I believe that guinea pigs are best for a child over six years old. I'm talking averages here. And I believe that a child between about six and 10 needs very strict supervision with the small animals. I don't believe in animals being kept in small children's bedrooms away from where the adults can supervise its care. The animal needs to be under supervision of an adult. Children can learn very positive things from an adult who adores their guinea pigs. They can help with filling up water bottles, giving vegetables, and sitting on the floor um, with the animal, not walking around with the animal either. The guinea pig can startle easy. It's really low on the totem pole of being a, a prey animal. Um, so it could startle, and that hearing is good, remember. So a loud bang can suddenly make a guinea pig leap out of a child's arms as they're walking around if they don't have a good grip. And certainly younger children don't have the dexterity, the good hand coordination to hold on to that pig. And then you have a very seriously hurt guinea pig. Most guinea pigs are happiest with friends of their own species. If you have guinea pigs, you need to give them as large a space as you can comfortably accommodate. If you have to compromise on the space, then you allow for more run time or exercise time for the guinea pigs daily. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later too. They need lap time and they need daily interaction to keep them sweet, easy to handle. If you adopt a guinea pig that is a little bit wild and crazy, you have to devote time to taming up that guinea pig. And if the child becomes worried or scared about handling that guinea pig because it is wild and crazy, you will never get to the state where that is a successful bonding. You have to work with them daily. Don't ever put them in a, an aquarium the ventilation is very poor and you deprive that guinea pig of its wonderful sense of smell of knowing what's going on outside. You don't put them in a rabbit cage where there is wire on the bottom, their little feet cannot cope. Compare a guinea pig's back foot which is this big with a rabbit's back foot which is this big. The guinea pig can catch its feet and it can get hurt, so never in a rabbit's cage. They need stimulation. And we'll talk about that in the cage as regards their toys, pipes to run through, houses to hide in, um, bells to ring, and various other things. And by the way, the big plastic balls that the pet stores may love to sell you, or the wheels, are for other rodents like mice, hamsters, and rats. They are absolutely not suitable for guinea pigs. Guinea pigs do not have that flexible back that they can go in a ball or run in a wheel. Whatever the movies tell you, it's not appropriate for guinea pigs. So please don't waste your hard-earned money on buying that kind of stuff. It's harmful. A guinea pig is considered in the US an exotic pet. If you take your exotic pet to an exotic vet, the charge for an examination is between about $40 and $60. That is before there is any kind of testing, x-rays, blood work, or medications. So getting out of a doctor's office for under $150, you're actually doing pretty well. So you do need to consider that. They're small pets, but it doesn't mean they're cheap, easy pets. It's at least about $400 of a year, $400 a year plus, to take care of your guinea pig with bedding and food. And that does not count the initial setup of the cage and the bottles and the bowls. They need grooming. 
And if you get those long haired ones that I showed you, you are going to have to take good care of that hair, otherwise the hair becomes matted and in a ball and then you're going to have some major problems uh, health-wise with the animals. They need nail care. Their nails do need to be trimmed. I would recommend monthly because that's the e easiest way. If you don't cut your guinea pig's nails, we will see the nails grow and curl round and then they ha are in danger of growing into the pad of the guinea pig. So they do need to be regularly trimmed um, by someone that knows what they're doing. And that could be you learning how to do it, going to a rescue group or an adoption centre, or going to a veterinary office or a grooming salon. Someone's there to help you, so don't neglect that. If you're going to be trimming the nails, you need to have the correct implements. I actually like to use the toenail version of just the human nail clipper, but you can get clippers specifically designed for animals if you would like to. The nail does have a quick in it. It means there's a little vein in there, and if you cut too deep, that nail is going to bleed. So you need some styptic powder to put the, nail, the little toe into to stop the bleeding, so have that on hand. Combs or brushes is your choice for the hair. Ears can get a little bit yucky, so what I would recommend is on a monthly basis, perhaps when you're doing the nails, is to get a soft cloth and use some oil. For example, I have jojoba oil here, so you would put a little spot on this and then just gently wipe inside the ear of the guinea pig and that will keep them clean. You can use olive oil as well. Consider your other animals in the house before bringing home a guinea pig. I have heard families say, um, you know, we had problems with our dog. You must consider, if you have dogs, what kind of dogs, the breed of dogs, and how safe the guinea pigs are going to be with those dogs. Where are you going to keep the guinea pigs that are safe from the dogs? Because tra tragedies do occur. So please, if you have a dog, that's your first pet, that's your first priority. So make sure you seriously consider if it's appropriate, not only for your family, but for your pets that you already have, if you bring in guinea pigs.